You're listening to People Think About It. Delve into the world of relationships, business, and politics with hosts Lamar Clark, Dorshall Clark, and Dominique Hagler on People Think About It, where thought-provoking discussions abound. Hey, welcome to People Think About It. This is Lamar coming to you from People Thinking About It. We have a special guest in the house today, Miss Genesis. And um, she's going to give us a little bit of information. She's a poet, a, a author, a stage play writer. Or she, uh, she does pretty much everything. And we're going to read a little bit of her bio. Uh, Miss Clark, read a little bit of uh, Genesis' bio and so we can uh, get this thing started. So Genesis Parks, welcome to People Think About It. Uh, we know that you're a songwriter and a poet. Mm -hmm. And you have found your voice and is on a mission to bring love, laughter, joy, and happiness to many people in the world over through your writings and creativity, a vision that she has made since childhood. She is also the producer and CEO of Genesis Peak Entertainment, LLC, where she has written and directed several off-Broadway shows such as Will You Be Ready, Restoration, The Greatest Gift, Love, Lord, I'm Coming Home, the musical stage plays back to my first real love and wailing the waters. Welcome, Genesis, to well, people. Thank think you. Of think thank about you. It. And uh, today, what we're going to do is going to get into a little bit of Miss Genesis. We're going to talk about a book she wrote called Two Angels. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're going to talk about the book, and she's going to give us a little insight and. Mm -hmm. um, and her story. story. And her story, yeah. So, welcome, Miss Genesis. So, tell us a little bit about uh, you as a author, book writer, play writer. Tell us a little bit about you, Miss Genesis. Okay. Um, there's a lot of hats, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, I started writing um, as a child. Uh, I used to, you know, hide in my room and if I wasn't reading, I was uh, creating and writing and um, creating characters and putting them together uh, for stories. Uh, writing has just always been a passion of mine. Um, and like I said, I've been writing since, uh, since I was a child, since I could uh, remember. Um, as I grew up, uh, it stayed with me. Uh, for a while, I did get um, away from it. When I got married, I had kids and it was just not that much time uh, to write like I love to write. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the kids uh, grew up, um, I kind of went back to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so uh, what, what was like, what drew you to write this story, The Two Angels? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, uh, Two Angels, uh, what drew me to write this story is uh, 23 years ago, um, uh, pregnant with my third child, um, I ran into complications, um, which is I was diagnosed with placenta privia at six months into my pregnancy. So it was not one of those things that I really had time to digest. Because okay. uh, at six months, you know, she's coming one way or another. You know, it's one of those situations you can't go around and you can't go over. You have to go through it. And, um, uh, being that that was my third child and the third time that I had a cesarean, um, I learned later that they don't recommend you have three because I had two prior. Okay. But I did have um, the third child, and uh, I was diagnosed with placenta privia again. And because of the scar tissues and uh, things from my previous uh, two cesareans, this one uh, was very severe. Okay. Uh, life changing, severe, severe. Um, went into the hospital a Monday morning to have, you know, to have my baby, you know, kissing my other two kids by, thinking that I was going to see them, you know, telling them you're going to have, see your sister after school. And they were excited. Everybody was excited. But little did I know that that would be the last time that I saw them uh, for at least a week. Oh, okay. Uh, a week or more. Um, so I did go to the hospital, went through the procedure. I immediately start to bleed um, on the as soon as they uh, did the incision, and it just went down, spiral downhill from there. Um, 
from what I was told, um, my uh, my husband, my prayer partner, my armor bearer at the t- at the time, um, instructed the doctors to go back three times. Uh, three times they came out to tell them they had did uh, done all they, they could, could do, mm. and each time he instructed them to go back because I wasn't finished. Mm-hmm. You know, there were still things that. Uh, I had to accomplish. So, right. and this child is still with you today. Oh yes, she is. Yes, okay. She and is. how old is this child? She's twenty three. Twenty three. So she's a miracle baby. She's a miracle baby, and in being the miracle baby, even her name, uh, her name Naja, means the miracle of God, and Naja Mariah, Mariah means God is my teacher, and the way that God gave me, you know, the name, He gave me the name early on. Okay. Uh, I didn't really know why I was choosing the name Miracle, uh, but she was indeed a miracle. And so I, I, I would assume that she's a part of this two angels. Uh, yes, I talk, yeah, well, she's the reason right. okay, <laughs> that okay. two angels uh, exist. Uh, she was born with a golden voice, sings like an angel, you okay. know. She came here gifted, you know, <laughs> um, singing, you know, singing like an angel. And uh, she... Um, it was not until I really got into the book uh, of preparing for the book that she really understood everything that took place uh, right. with her birth. Um, so she was a big inspiration of the writing of the book. Oh yes, most definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She was. Uh, she was my muse. <laughs> did, she did, was an inspiration. Did she? Uh, um, Give me insight of what she may want it into the book or what have you. Um, there is a, a letter from her in the book in the back. Um, and I tell you, as many times I don't told this testimony, I'm always tearing up. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's a but, powerful <laughs> testimony. Yeah, she she writes a letter just thanking, um, you know, the, the doctors and the nurses and everybody for everything that they Right. Did they played a hand in saving uh, her life and in saving my life, which saved well her right. life. Exactly. You know? exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, she w- was very emotional. But yeah, she's twenty three. They said that uh, we wouldn't make it. Well, and you you're know? here to prove them different. I'm here to prove them wrong. So, you know? so, <laughs> so in, in being a stage writing stage plays and mm-hmm. things that are you planning on turning two angels into a stage play? Yes, yes, I am. Um, Currently, we are working on the film, um, Two Angels. And the title of the book is Two Angels in a Biscuit Full of Honey. Okay. Um, and uh, we're working on the film. Um, also have an upcoming, um, as I said, uh, stage play as well. Okay. Based off the book. And, and where, where, where do you plan on launching the stage play? Um, I usually do the stage plays here um, in Duluth at the Infinite Energy Center. Okay. Uh, well, I don't think it's the, it's called that anymore. Uh, so yeah, that would be like the fourth. Or, or Bell's, I mean, the Gas South? South, 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 South Yeah, I've put four productions on, and each time I have put a production on at the same place, it's been a different name. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yes, uh, thinking okay. about launching it, launching it there. So get into a little bit about your book. Uh, two two angels and a biscuit full of honey. Mm-hmm. So, get, get, tell us a little bit. What does that mean? What that means? I start with the biscuit full of honey, and, and everybody asks me that. You know, uh, a biscuit full of honey means uh, faith, simply faith. And I got that from. Uh, I remember my mom uh, when she was alive. She used to make make um, homemade biscuits. Okay. You know, from scratch. And I would sit at the table and just watch her because to me that was a work of art. Yeah. You know, to knead and dough. And I'm sure everybody listening out there probably had a mom or a grandma yeah. that, you know, would do the same thing. And I would just sit at the table and she was always like, you know, just sitting there watching me. And it wasn't because uh, she thought it was because I wanted her to hurry because I wanted to eat. (laughs) But it was because I would watch her and see how much she would put love and care into kneading the dough. And they came out, the biscuits would come out perfect every time. And what I got from that is that 
she had faith that they would come out perfect right. every time. She didn't think about it. She just did it. Right. Um, and so the going back to my story, uh, because everything did spiral down, I did pass away. Um, I bled continuously. Um, and on that particular morning, uh, there's a lot to the testimony, but just right. to give you tidbits, on that particular morning, uh, the hospital that I was at usually delivers 100 babies a day. You know, but that particular morning, they had two people, and it was me and another uh, another woman who just so happened to have the same. I found out through um, a nurse friend had the same uh, procedure, procedure done as I did, and she didn't make it. Oh man! Uh, well, it's usually like a ninety nine point something percent that you don't make it. Oh. You know, um, so with that being said, um, I did pass away. And um, in the book, most of the things that were going on um, while I was, un, you know, unconscious, uh, my um, my husband at the time told me, um, helped me, you know, write the book. But I do touch base on what I experienced. Right. Um, I said on my side, <laughs> on the other side. Right. And, you know, and I remember when my doctor diagnosed me at six months. And she had this look of, of uncertainty um, in her eyes because, number one, we had built a relationship, which was abnormal. Right. Uh, most of the time, you don't build, you know, that closeness. You're not that close with your, with your doctor. But it was just something about her. And to her, it was something about me that we built a, right. a relationship uh, before and, you know, and I looked at her when she was telling me my situation, uh, she was expecting me to break down. You know, she was expecting me. She She's looking at me like, are you okay? Do you right. understand what I'm telling you? And I'm like, yes, I understand. I said, but what I want you to understand is that for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. So... At that point and stage in my life, my faith was so strong that it didn't matter what you told me. It doesn't matter what happens. Okay. The only thing that matters is that I'm intact with my relationship with God. Okay. So it didn't matter to me whether I was on this side or I come out on the other side. It was about how strong your faith was. Yes. I am going to be, I'm going to be okay because I'm going to be with him. Amen. No matter what. Right. No matter what anybody says. Right. And, you know. So I, you was prepared. Yes, I was prepared. I was From prepared. From the six months prior, when you found out six mm-hmm. months you started preparing yourself or you was already prior prepared? I, I was already prepared. Yeah. And um, I'm a dreamer. I've been having dreams since I was five years old. Okay. And as I grew up, God gave me the gift to inter- interpretate. Uh, interpret interpret the dreams. Right. And God had started giving me dreams. You know, I was having these dreams, and I was like, what is going on? Um, and I talk about the dreams in the book. Um, you know, they're very how can, detailed. How can our listeners get your book? Is it on Amazon or? It is on Amazon. It's also on Genesis, P-K-S-E-N-T dot com, which is my website. Um, you can go there and get the book um, as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you want to give us a little insight into, I mean, because you say, I know you said you wanted to read a couple of poems or you wanted to read a poem and stuff. That's, is that in this book or is that just something? You no, know? no, it's it's in this book. I do uh, do poetry to music. I am a poet. Okay. Um, yeah, I do have uh, a couple of uh, singles out where um, I do my poetry to, to music. It's just uh, some people call it rap. I'm like, I'm too old, for, you know. For them to be calling me doing. Well, you, can, you can be I'm the hip hop mama. You can be the hip hop mama. <laughs> I you just like hip hop poet. I'm a hip hop poet. Um, I just like you know putting. Uh, it's very soothing. Right. You know, it's soothing. It, it reminds me of 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 paradise. You know, mm-hmm. um, and that's, so your faith in God it has it started from a childhood. Yes, my father. Um, he's a, a preacher. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Preachers all in my family, but, you know, I was raised, you know, by him. And my mom was a a believer as well. Um, All I knew was faith because that's all I saw uh, in my father was faith. Uh, I remember when I was young, I used to try to, you know, even walk when he was outside working, um, in whether it's mowing the lawn, working on the car or right. whatever. He had a, a garage in the back, and I would go and watch him, um, you know, work on, just like I would watch my mom right. knead the dough. Mm-hmm. I would watch him. He would take a motor loose and put, I just like art. You know, so you I can mean, take a motor apart now? No, I cannot. I can about, pass. How, I can pass him the wrench. How about how about that dough? Need that dough? You can do that? No, that's my sister. <laughs> okay, okay. So you but watching. you was the watcher. I was always a, a writer. I okay. was always okay. yeah. Right. So you was in your room? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was right. I was, was writing. writing in your room. If I wasn't was outside, uh, and what I was uh, starting to say is that when my father would walk back, you know, to the house. Uh, he will always say it's quitting time. You know, it's time to eat. I would try to walk in his shadow, walk in his footsteps. You know, as a child, to me, I know some kids, they all, you know, playing with their toys or doing something else. But I was always, so my, was my highlight part. was walking in his shadow. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, every time he would step, I would try to put my my. Uh, my my foot, you know, in, in his, his shadow, shadow in his right. shadow, yeah. Yeah. and now, and I talk about that. I have a whole chapter uh, uh, called Fatherly Love, where I compare his love with my heavenly Father's love, and I believe, with all my heart, that it was because of that of his love that I established the bond and the relationship that I have with God today. Yeah. Uh, very good. And that's what I needed at the time, you and, know. And you have other siblings? Yes, I do. I have one sister and, and two brothers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who all, um, they testify in the back of the book. Uh, and in the back of the book, I call, uh, I have a chapter called Earth Angels. Oh, and okay. there are some uh, testimonies from those that were there at the hospital, my church, my family, people that came rushing down. Uh, they didn't expect, you know, as right. I said, they didn't expect me to uh, expect me to uh, make it. And prayer warriors came from every direction. Uh, prayer is powerful. Um, so how long were you? Um, how long were you uh, passed away before you came back? Do you know? Fully seven days. You was gone. You was you was seven days. And then I mean, I was comatose. Right. I, I started to come out, out uh, in about three to four days. But I, was I wouldn't be yeah I wouldn't be here today <laughs> you know right um, so yeah because that's just like some people get in certain situations of accidents and something and they, and the hospital actually puts them in a coma yeah to save them to to save them yeah, yeah they actually put you in a coma uh, so after I came uh, I started to come around it was like three or you know three or four days then uh, they I guess I was trying to harm myself. Uh, you know, because you got all these tubes right, uh, right. down your throat, and you know. Um, so, so the question I would have to ask is this: because, um, well, my my wife had had a brother; he's no longer with us, and he uh, shared with us somewhat that same experience that mm-hmm. is he left his body, mm-hmm. um, and uh, just you know, just sitting back and trying to understand that when a person said they left their body, what do you think? Spiritually, from a spiritual perspective, when you say left your body, what left? Your spirit left. Yes, your spirit left. Because that's what we are. Right. Just a spirit, yeah. We're, we're, we're spirit. God is a spirit. So, you know. Mm-hmm. And some, some people, and maybe this is more TV than anything, but people say when their spirit leaves, they can look down and see themselves. Oh, well, that never happened. Okay. Uh, with me. Uh, everybody's testimony is different. Uh, I know there are other people like me, uh, but I'm honored that God did choose me uh, to come back and and let people know eternal life is real. So you know. can you just give us a little sprinkle of what happened while you was gone? Um, just a little bit of your experience? My experience, uh, first of all, I was happy. 
I have a chapter called Green Pastors. Mm-hmm. Um, I was happy. There was whew, so much joy and peace and love and just total blissfulness. There was, I mean, it's like you're on a vacation of a lifetime. Mm. Um, but it was just so much. It's indescribable. I try to describe it as best as right, I can right. uh, in the book. But really, uh, it, it doesn't touch right. what so, you uh, experience there. So is it like most people that they, they say you see this bright light? Mm. You know, when I was writing in my book, you know, I had to I had to tell the truth of what I experienced. Right, right. And like you said, everybody I experiences see, I didn't see a tunnel, you know. I didn't see, you know, the bright light. It was like instantly I was there. Okay. It was like joy just pulsed through me mm. instantly, you know, I was there. So did and, you feel like you wanted to stay there and not come back to Earth? Oh, yes. I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay. Um, you know, people say, why do you say that? I'm like, you don't understand. You know, I wanted to stay because that was a place of, uh, the best way I can describe it is to describe a newborn baby. When a newborn baby is born, they cry. Why do they cry so much? They cry because you're taking them out of their comfort zone. Mm. You're taking them out of the place of, of warmth, you know, and nurture, uh, right. being nurtured. So you're taking them out of that, and here they come into this cold world. Of course, you're going you're gonna to cry. You've been in an incubator right. for nine months, you know. So that's how I felt, you know. Um, I felt like I came back to a place that was totally opposite oh, of what I experienced. And it doesn't matter if you experience it for three seconds. The, the experience the is experience overwhelming. The experience is overwhelming. And um, it, it's just indescribable. Right. Uh, I felt like, uh, you know, that I had been just dropped off, you know, like a store. You know, drops the baby off and, you know, the angels fly away. And it's like, okay, God, wh- What? You know, for a while, I didn't even recognize my family. Um, I knew they were my family because I was told Mm -hmm. they were my family, and they treated me like Mm -hmm. I was a family. But there was no connection. It sounds to me like a a rebirth. Well, 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 you know, it's 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 thing thing that I take from what you say, and it's almost like how I explain death to people. Everybody deals with death differently. Yes, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And to have that kind of experience, I'm quite sure there's every, people that have been through that experience probably deal with it differently. They probably can just like I said, her brother said he saw a bright light. You said you had this experience. So I'm quite sure everybody deals with it mm-hmm. differently. Mm-hmm. And may, maybe that's something that God wants them to see at that present Yes, that's time. Your, your message. We all have, just like we all have different gifts. We all have different callings. Uh, this is uh, two angels in a biscuit full of honey. This is my message. Uh, your brother, whatever he brother experienced, law, yeah. Yeah, brother-in-law, that's his message. But they all serve in the same God. Right. You understand? We all got the same, you know, message. It's like a big pot of vegetable soup, you know. Somebody got to be the carrots. Somebody got to be the potatoes, you know. Right. Somebody got to be the corn. But it's all one big soup. It's going to be turn out to one big, and one it's gonna be, And it's going to be soup. good. You know, it, it's, it's just like even... Uh, spiritually, you know, um, is it, is this like you read something in the Bible and you may read it in John and you don't understand it in John mm-hmm. until you go to Matthew. You mm-hmm. read it in mm-hmm. Matthew. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm starting yes, to yes. get, but then go to Job and then you. It's it's like the 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 Bible is so repetitive that, but it gives yes, it to it you is. to the point that you can understand. Yeah, and it, because it. It, it wants everybody to understand, mm-hmm. but we all learn at a different level. That is so true. I often uh, share this with people is that we all, nobody, first of all, nobody's better than anybody else, than anyone else. You understand? We all are in different grades. You remember when you was in school, you know, you're in the first grade, the second grade, third grade, okay? Mm-hmm. Where, where you are in your life, you may be 
in the 10th grade while I'm still in the 5th grade. But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to make the 10th grade. Right. And it doesn't mean because you're in the 10th grade that you're better than me because I'm in the 5th grade. Well, no more. Small. You understand what I'm saying? We all have to graduate from that grade that we're in in order to be promoted to the next grade. Maybe I'm ready to be promoted to the next grade. Maybe you're not. Maybe you may you may get kept back because you didn't learn your lesson. Mm-hmm. Okay, you didn't do your your assignment. You didn't do what God put you here to do. And I often tell people it's very important that you do what God calls you to do because at the end of the day, every knee <laughs> will bow, you know, and every tongue confess mm-hmm. that Jesus is Lord. Mm-hmm. I always tell people this that. Life itself has nothing to do with age. It has to do with wisdom and knowledge. Yes. Because yes. you can learn from a baby. You can yes, learn you from can. an older person. You mm-hmm. can learn from a child, you know. But we live in this society where people are like, oh, well, you this age, you know this, or you should know better. But Mm-mm. it's not, when, when you understand wisdom, when you mm-hmm. understand wisdom, wisdom is a place of growth. You yes. know what I mean? And it's growth and experiences. And your experiences help give you wisdom and how you deal with those experiences. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because we all kind of deal with them differently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said, we all got to get to that point of of, of peace and love. And what what does that experience teach you about peace and love? Mm -hmm. You know, because just because I'm 60 something and you're 13, Mm -hmm. you you could be wise. You could be wiser than Mm -hmm. I. You know, mm-hmm. we got to look at crazy. He was 12 years old. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, just give us a little feel about, um, uh, we want to understand in the poetry side of you now. Uh, yeah, just, can you spit yeah. us some, some poem, a poem um, real quick? Yeah. Oh, give, yeah, give us the little a, poetry side of you. Um, there's a couple of poems in the book um, that I wanted to uh, to read that really reflects what I experienced in my relationship um, with God um, and this particular one is called Green Pastures as I, as I was talking about earlier it says in the green pastures there I lay no worries or wants to succumb me this day just I and my shepherd united in love as the purity in the wings of a morning dove in the green pastures there I lay no past or present can allure me away submerged in the safety of my shepherd's arms With passion and strength, he shields me from harm. In the green pastures, there I lay. No prowls or thieves lurk in my way. God is my shepherd, and I am his sheep. His love watches me even while I sleep. Mm, That's a good one. Okay, so so tell us what that that, what does that actually mean to you? That that relationship, that experience, I was there with my heavenly Father. And to me, that is uh, uh, a, a love that you cannot, you can't understand. You know, I was there with him, and nobody can take that from me. Exactly. So when you, when you know that your loved one has gone on mm-hmm. to, be, to be in heaven, yes. so we on earth shouldn't worry about them. They are no. all right. No. Do they, do, so do they look in on us? Um, I, I believe that the, the elders do watch us, you know, um, I I'm remember when my mom passed away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe they do, but I don't believe they, let me take that back. I have to say no. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say no is because I had no idea, you know, um, uh, there was a, a time after that uh, some of my uh, church friends came to me and they didn't want to tell me everything that happened in the beginning because uh, I was still recovering. They didn't want me to relapse or anything like that. They were more worried than I was. And they were trying to tell me that I died. You know, at some point in time, I died. Mm-hmm. And to me, you know, I'm looking at them like I never died. You know, I remember where I was, mm. where my spirit was. I never died. So for someone to tell me that I died, 
and me to experience, not to experience that death, you know, there, I'm alive because your spirit, when you die, your spirit lives on. So I'm in the spirit form. Right, right. To me, I'm not dead because I remember the experience. I remember being uh, in green pastures. I remember the love, the joy, the peace. I remember my angels. I remember, I remember all of that. So I wasn't in a dead state, well, you, you know. You know, one thing is in you saying that, um, I, I, I believe, you know, from the fleshly standpoint, mm-hmm. we we fall so in love with the fleshly standpoint or the mm-hmm. fleshly part of human nature, right? Mm-hmm. That when you separate that spirit from that yes. flesh, mm-hmm. right, that you feel you're in a better place, but the people that's still here, like you say, those people came and told you you actually yeah. died. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you died of the flesh, not of the spirit. Yes. See? and Eternal life. What, to answer kind of her question is that, you know, do you think they look down on us and, and, and things like that? But if I left my fleshly body and I could not recognize or, or, or see or comment, even those that are here praying upon me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think no that, recollection. I think that okay. you have gone to be with your maker and you mm-hmm. live in a place of uh, a peace mm-hmm. and, and happiness. And, and so when you Real. live in that place mm-hmm. of peace, right, there's no need to look back. No. There's no need to look back. No. Because what what the, what does God say? We all one day will rejoice. Mm-hmm. What you just like said in the beginning, every knee will bow and every mouth will confess. Mm-hmm. So we all one day, hopefully, and doing the right thing, will see that place of, of peace. Mm-hmm. You know, so, mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes when I, I, I hear people, when people die, and I know how meaningful those people may have been to you or oh, whatever, yes. mm-hmm. you want to believe that. But then when you understand the spiritual realm of things, mm-hmm. there's a whole different perspective about it. Yeah. You know? I remember when my mom passed, um, you know, at her funeral, you know, I, I did my poetry, her family. My father did the eulogy. Mm-hmm. Uh, my brother, who's a, um, um, a minister as well, um, he, both of my brothers, they, they sung. Um, I did poetry. And people was coming up, and they like, how did y'all do that? How could y'all the stand strength, up there? The strength of it. Uh, yeah, the strength and, and be strong enough mm-hmm. to do do that. How did your dad do your his wife's eulogy? Mm-hmm. Um because I know where she is, right. you know, mm. we know where she is, you know. Um, and when you know that, when you have that knowing, um, I don't look at funerals and death. Well, I never have right. really, you know, as something just being the end. It's mm. not the end. Mm. And that, and uh, all actuality is the beginning. Right. You because know? we were, we supposed to rejoice in death. Yes. Rejoice. Because they are in a better place. Um, mm-hmm. For a while, I was angry um, mm-hmm. with God, and I talk, I talk about that in, in the book. I was angry because I was allowed to taste something. You know, it's like a a, a newborn babe. You're feeding them. You're feeding them their peas and their their carrots, and then one day you mess up and give them some peaches, and giving them the peaches, and then if you go back and try to give them those carrots and peas, they don't want it. Right. They don't want it because they tasted something yeah. sweet. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I went through that. That's what I went through. It's kind of like withdrawal. Right. <laughs> um, and I was angry, you know. I didn't want to be around nobody. Um, it was it was very hard, you know. Um, it was very hard. And people don't, you know, they don't understand. They don't have a clue, you know. They think when ever they see a loved one who's been through an experience like that and they wake up and they want them to be the same, you know, they want, you know, they start talking to them about stuff, earthly stuff and natural stuff. And you don't have a clue. I didn't. Let me take that back. I didn't have a clue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember my husband at the time was uh, in my bedside talking to me about the kids and, and, you know, just normal conversations that we would have prior right. um, to this ordeal. And I'm just looking and listening because I know 
that they he needed that um, right. because of what he had been through. And the kids needed that. So I kind of like kept that part um, a secret. You know, because I didn't want, I've always been a person that I didn't, uh, I don't like to hurt people's feelings uh, unless I have to. Because mm. I am do have a mandate from God that I have to tell the truth. And um, so I kind of kept that part, you know, hid. I was one of those mothers who if their, their child or anybody close to me would hurt themselves, I would feel their pain. Mm. You know, my, my daughter, <laughs> my oldest daughter, forever she would... You know, either stump her foot or hit her shoulder on the door. And I, I will always feel my children's pain. But after that, when I came back, I could not feel that pain anymore. Wow. And I remember, it was about six months on, I remember because it's just like, as I said, withdrawal. Mm -hmm. You know, you experience that emptiness. I'm empty. Right. Because my to me, my spirit man is still there, you know. In paradise, it, it was a love connection. I call it a spiritual love affair. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a connection. Now I'm here, and I'm trying to find and taste that which I had, mm. which is not here. Right. You know, right. and so just like a baby, you get angry. <laughs> you you cry, you know. Um, I think I cried for six months straight, to be right. honest. You know, nobody knew, you know whether I'm in the closet or in the tub, or, you know, taking a bath. I was crying. I was crying because I wanted to stay. Yeah. And I wanted to go back. And uh, I've never talked about this much <laughs> about, it, yeah. about it, but I did go through a period where, you know, I just wanted to end it all. You right. know, I wanted to commit suicide. Uh, I was no, in the mindset of, I'm sorry. No, no, so, so. It, it was just something you said that I just wanted to grasp mm -hmm. hold of for you because you, 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 you speak about the joy that you felt, you know, mm -hmm. from a spiritual perspective, but then you yet say, you know, like a child, if, I, if I'm giving this child vegetables, that's the, they, they like it because that's the only thing it tastes mm -hmm. for. Now I give them something sweet. They don't want that vegetable anymore. No. But you just now said that it was so sweet to you that you contemplated that, hey, committing suicide so in the midst of committing suicide do you think you would have seen the promised land probably probably not but you gotta understand my mm -hmm. mindset right. was cause you was thinking of the flesh if not you, from if, the spirit if you're not gonna come get me then I'm coming to, to get you, you. Mm -hmm. okay. you know and that was my mindset and, 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 at, and, and, at that time and, 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 and you I'm know just, what that's a good mm -hmm. explanation though mm -hmm. yeah. because yeah. it's just like it's just like you just now said well if you're not coming to get me you came to get me, and then you left me on the stairs. Uh huh. You, now yeah. I want to be off of these for stairs pur for yeah, purpose. For purpose. Yeah. Now I'm coming. <laughs> so I, you can't come in. So I'm going to get you. Mm -hmm. So I understand mm -hmm. the, the, the mindset of I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna commit suicide so I can come be with. So you. So I can come be with and you. be with you because nobody here, under, nobody Und understood right. me. People, you know, because when you, you talk know. about this kind of stuff, people sit around and look at you like, okay, like you're crazy. Yeah, but this you, person has lost their mind, you know, because mm -hmm. they never have experienced that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think any time in life where you have some kind of awakening, there's only going to be a few people that even understand what you're oh, going through. Oh, of course. Through. Yeah. You know what I mean? That road is narrow now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, I, I just want to say that that's a great story. And it makes me feel closer to my brother. At mm -hmm. this point, because now I, you know, because we would have that conversation, like, mm -hmm. you know, people are in heaven; they're so happy. They don't, they don't want to come back to to oh, the no. world, right? No. And he's no. like, and and they're not worrying about us on earth. But my mm -hmm. brother simply told me, yes, they they're gonna be in your life. We're gonna mm -hmm. we're still gonna be looking over you, or people up in heaven are still mm -hmm. watching you. So mm -hmm. that's not true. Uh, so based and maybe, on what you just said, maybe he is this, in my space. Yeah, a lot. This of times. is from my. Just from just my testimony, yeah. you know, maybe because uh, sometimes I think about it, uh, I didn't get that far, right? You know, I was in the courtyard. Oh, week. oh okay. You know, I was in the. You, you know, just had just walked up. Yeah, yeah. I think. Got yeah, there. I was getting ready. Uh, you, you didn't get to the pearly gates. I didn't get to the pearly gates, but what happened was he was in the waiting room. Um, I was in the waiting. We, we call it the waiting room. Uh, <laughs> I remember going. To different scenes. It was as if someone was taking me on a tour. Mm. You know, 
wanted me. Uh, and just when I think, you know, because it's a lot to take in. I'm, I'm, you're so happy, you know, you see this and then you snatched and you go to the next scene and you see that and you over, you're you overwhelmed. I remember, and I will share this, uh, I was on like a platform and the platform was turning around and it was these colorful sheets and uh, curtains and they went, there was no end and, you know, no beginning. You know, right. they was just these sheets. And I remember I was just in awe of the beauty I was like, oh my God, you know, I was just thinking, wow, this is, this is beautiful. You know, this is make a, a gorgeous, you know, dress. And I was like, whose is this? And it's hard to explain, but it's just understood that it was my angel taking me mm -hmm. on a tour. It was one of those things, spirit to spirit, you mm -hmm. know, I understood what it was. And he was like, this is you. And for the longest I didn't understand until I started, you know, writing the book. I started writing the book over 21 years ago. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is me. You know, what do you mean this is me? He says, this is this is you. He was showing me the inside of me. And you maybe know? he wanted you to and bring some of that beauty back to earth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, just think about it, what you're saying, that, you know, it's just like somebody's, taking you and showing you what you could have mm -hmm. or showing you that inner person within you, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a lot of angry people out here, but they got good in their heart, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the world makes them angry. Yes. The world makes yes. them angry where they can't even release that good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes maybe you, people have these experiences. So I'm going to show you the good you got in you. Yes. I'm yes. going to show you that yes. good. I'm not right. ready to take you, mm -hmm. my child. I'm not ready to take you, but I want to show you. So I want to show you back. who, so you can go back and be who I yes. want you to be. And, and not only that, I remember, uh, like I said, I did. I was in, I was in a, I was in a pit there. That I talk about that in the, in the book, but I was in a pit here, and begging God, you know, I can't live without you. You know, I can't live without that which I tasted. You know, it's, impo it's impossible. Right. And that's what I was trying to do. And I remember just begging God, you know, you know, I, I don't want to be here, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and people, like you said, they think of death. You know, you you, you want to die? You want to what? But you don't die. And that's what people are missing. Right. They, they, you the do people, not die. They, they're afraid to leave the shell. You that's know, what it is. But when you have that relationship with God, um, you know, it's just like, you, you know, you and your wife. If she doesn't come home <laughs> or she goes away on a trip, you're going to miss her. Yeah. Why? Because you love her. So it, and it's the same scenario. I missed him because I loved him right. that much. And to have somebody like that, and that's what God wants for each and every one of us. It's not like he just chose me right. and said, I'm going to give it this, you know, <laughs> you're the only one. No, he wants this. For everybody. everybody, I tell people the Lord's Prayer. When the disciples ask the Lord to teach us to pray, in that prayer is, Thy kingdom come yeah. on earth as it is in heaven. Right. So I strongly believe you don't have to wait to die to even experience what I've, I've experienced. He wants us to pray for the kingdom to come. He wants this. And I, as the angel was telling me, this is you. Me being everybody, as you said, here on earth. And when I used to pray for the Lord to take me, um, he said, I make you a deal. He said, if you bring people back with you, then I'll take you. Okay. So that was my mandate to go not only tell the truth, but to preach and teach that eternal life is real. You know, that... Uh, you can have that love and joy. And I think, as you said, people are angry. When you have your mindset, because I've met a lot of people that say, oh, well, this, this is not going to be this. You know, you're not going to have that down here. We're human down here. You know, we're not going to do. I have never heard so much what a person cannot do. Right. 
you know, than, you know, from us here. Right. How do you know you can't do it? Because they never done it. That's why they you, do you it. You never done it. You make up an excuse to act the way you act. Why don't you try it? Yeah. yeah, you know, that's like that old cliche, God give you two ears, more to hear and hear and less to speak. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's yes, why you got yes. two ears. And, you know, it's just like I was, before my wife came in, I was having a conversation with a friend, and, you know, she was telling me, you know, different things and about, you know, her and her daughter and stuff like that. And, you know, these, these young people today, they totally way different. Mm -hmm. and, yes. I mean... Mm -hmm. I think they live in to an entitlement. You owe me this, mm -hmm. the disrespect, mm -hmm. and this and that and other. And I was just sharing with her, you know, because of the, the era we grew up in, it was about discipline. It was about respect and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I was mm -hmm. telling her, you know, when your daughter calls, stop giving her so much direction. Mm -hmm. You know, she's a grown woman now. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm, I, I know you had that love for that child, but guess what? When mm -hmm. you pick up that phone, pick it up to listen. Don't mm -hmm. pick it up to speak. Yes. Because when you pick it up to listen, mm -hmm. she'll begin to open up. But when you pick it up to speak and say, oh, I wouldn't have done that or don't do this and this, that, that's a, you, you, they're going to rebel against you. Automatically. You, you're gonna, mm -hmm. you, you, so you, you want to pick up the phone more to listen, to listen. than speak. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I was telling her. I was like, you know, when you pick up that phone and you this and that and she telling you this, hey, I, I know you got a plan. I, I, I know you're a smart person. I know you mm -hmm. got a plan. So mm -hmm. I said, I, I just think that sometimes because of the era that we grew up in mm -hmm. and, and, and even knowing God as you get progress in life and get older and get wiser mm -hmm. and get closer to God mm -hmm. and you begin to share that wisdom, mm -hmm. then, you know, it, it, it's just like you, you, you see a guy on the corner hungry and dirty and just like, you, you, you can't really go to him and directly up to him and start preaching God. Mm -hmm. You got to, right. hey man, let me fulfill You hungry? Let me, let me, let me feed you. Mm -hmm. And then when I try to feed you and your belly is full, now I can preach God to mm -hmm. you, you because now you're going to listen. Yeah, you got to meet, meet them, them where they, they are. are. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, you know, don't do that. And like I say, a lot of people have their own experiences mm -hmm. because I think each and every one of our experiences with spirituality, with God, you know, because he dwells within you, mm -hmm. is, is your experience. Mm -hmm. And you can share your experience. That's why they call it a testimony. That's right. You know, you share your experience. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean my experience is going to be your experience. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying to you is this. To know him, mm -hmm. to know him, yes. you're going to have a great experience. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. And then you begin to have a testimony. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, uh, that's the way we look at it. And we sit back and we experience things and the two angels and, mm -hmm. you know, and the different stage plays that inspire people mm -hmm. to, you know, to write books, to share their testimonies. And, oh, you know, yes. it's, it's like it's been it's been a, a great experience to share this with you for you to even open up yeah, about thank your you experience. So much. Yeah, yeah. This is a <laughs> this was this was a great. Discussion. I've never opened up. I've done interviews, but I've never opened up this. You know, uh, well, that's what the platform is for. Yeah. People yeah. think about it. We try mm -hmm. to make people comfortable to, mm -hmm. to and yeah. make you feel like you can open up and with no with mm -hmm. no judgment. Mm -hmm. Be because the the real the real uplifting thing is is that you share your experiences or we as people share our experiences and it's to uplift and help somebody. Remember always this purpose is never for self. Purpose oh. is always for somebody. I used to tell people all the time, if you meet somebody and you ask them what their purpose and they start talking about self, they don't know their purpose. Mm -hmm. Purpose is never self. And they say, how can you say that? Because Jesus Christ came to give us salvation. And he wasn't and, selfish. And yeah. he wasn't, it wasn't for him. Yeah, it, it wasn't and, for him. You know, if, if we all sat back and knew that we was going to get beat, uh, mm -hmm. sh you know, cut, mm -hmm. nailed to a cross and all that, you know, we won't even do that for our own children. Let known mm -hmm. this this person did that for us. Mm -hmm. So his purpose was so we have salvation, so we have mm -hmm. life, so we can be born again. Mm -hmm. And and when you think about it in that perspective, right, he's always going to give us something that we can share with somebody else. Always. I remember so many nurses, nurses that have been in the field for 20 years or more had never witnessed someone coming Recovering. back right. from uh, from what I uh, recovered from. And I remember I used to lay in the bed, and in the hospital bed, and I was like, 
you know, evidently this was something, this, it, and it was, it was a big event. Mm-hmm. It was all over. Yeah. I had, uh, when my nurse, when my doctor was, uh, saw that she was in trouble, she called um, the other two doctors who practiced with her. They came to the hospital. So I had three doctors, and it just happened to be one of the world top surgeons on a different floor mm-hmm. that heard about it, that right. came up and scrubbed in. Uh, because there were only two people at that time there. <laughs> giving birth. I, I had both. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had everybody. Both blood teams. Uh, they were going back and forth with blood. It mm-hmm. was it was a, it was mayhem, you know, from mm-hmm. what I, uh, people was sending me gifts and cards and stuff afterwards. And nurse, I had one nurse came in and she said, who are you? Oh. And, you know, and I looked at her uh, because at that time I I didn't know. What you know, all that was big, going on, right. Uh, yeah, everything that <laughs> happened. And she says, you've had so many people in and out of this hospital. She said, I hope if I ever get sick. I have as many people come uh-huh. and, and the see healing them. hands. Yeah, and I still didn't, you know, grasp, grasp it at the time. Like, why would all of these people, you know? All right. You didn't. You didn't even realize what was going on with you. Yourself. Yes, but yeah. they all loved you. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's good. So, um, like I was saying, we we appreciate you coming in and sharing mm-hmm. your testimony Thank and you. sharing your, you know, insight and uh, once again, just give the audience where they can go to to find you find your books mm-hmm. find uh you know if they want to check out one of your stage plays they want to mm-hmm. check out some of your poetry would you just tell us again where they can go to to mm-hmm. uh, contact you yeah you can go to genesis um that's genesis with a j j e n e s i s p k s e n t dot com um to get the information about my book, you can also uh, get information about uh, my poetry, my poetry album. Um, you also you can go on iTunes, put in Genesis Peaks, P E A K S. Uh, go to YouTube, Genesis Peaks. I'm there. Okay. Right. Facebook. So you're on every platform. Uh, All you got to do I'm is on reach every out. And now you're on People Think About It. Now, now I'm on think. People Think About It. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and two two angels. And, and a, a biscuit, biscuit full, full of honey. honey. You yeah. know, and biscuits and honey is some good things, especially yeah. when they hot. Yeah. It's about, the whole book is about love, faith, and gratitude. And mm-hmm. there you go. So mm-hmm. we, we thank you for coming in. We thank you for thank sharing you for your testimony. Uh, we hope that you, we can have a part two come back. Mm-hmm. Um, and we that. have a round table. So we just want to thank you guys for listening to People Think About It think and about hope that... Uh, sure to- you uh, have been listening to people think about listening it. to people Be think sure to about subscribe it. Subscribe to the show and share it with your friends so that you never miss an episode. A new episode drops every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Thank you for listening.